All right. Well, let's rock and roll. It's time to get this show started and talk about Donald Trump getting shot. Sound like a plan? All right. Well, let's get to it. I guess I should formally welcome you. Welcome to the Jason Modar Show. Glad you're here today. So, Donald Trump. Let's talk about Donald Trump getting shot. I have a few thoughts on that that I would like to share. And I'm sure by now I don't need to explain to you the situation. I'm sure you know exactly what went down. Even if you were hiding under a rock attempting to shield yourself from all possible sources of news, even that guy probably still knows what went down and what happened to former president Donald Trump. So one of the first, it got three primary things I want to talk about first. One of the first things that ran through my mind when I saw the clip, when it went down, was it Saturday? I think it was, yeah, I think it was Saturday. That's right. One of the first things that went through my mind when I saw the clip of the shooting was how much character Donald Trump showed after being shot. I mean, the fa- I mean, think about this. He gets shot in the ear. He realizes what's going down. He drops to the ground. Secret Service agents surround him and tackle him and keep him down on the ground. He gets up, pumps his fist with his ear having been shot, blood all over his face, tells his followers, tells the people who are going to vote for him, who are at that rally, and by extension, all people in the United States of America who want to fight against this disgusting, wicked, democratic regime and cultural rot that we have, tells them to fight, gets up after being shot, being tackled and put to the ground and being moved out of there by Secret Service agents, pumps his fists, leads them in a chant of USA, USA, and tells everybody to continue to fight. The first thing I thought was, that is the kind of man I want to follow. That is the kind of man I am willing to have lead me, that I'm willing to get behind, that I'm willing to follow. That is the kind of man that I want as president of the United States of America. That's the man I want at the top in my country. That's the kind of man that I would say, sign me up to follow that guy. Man, what? You cannot fake that. You can't fake the bravery and courage that that man showed after being shot, after a dude attempted to assassinate him you cannot fabricate that reaction you don't just all of a sudden decide yeah you know what i'm gonna get up pump my fist tell people to continue fighting and lead the crowd in a chant of usa usa oh and by the way i think what the next day or the day after he had a nine o'clock tea time that he totally showed up for he's like yeah and i'm I'm also not gonna ruin i had a golf game planned yeah someone tried to kill me don't care i gotta i gotta golf i got a tea time i gotta make at nine o'clock wherever it was that he went and played golf you can't fake that. That's not something that this just can be made up, right? And I suppose this is probably the time where I'm supposed to caveat about all the bad things about his character. I'm not going to do that. Hard pass. No thanks. I'm simply going to praise an aspect of his character. That's all I'm going to do because it is worthy of praise. The fact that he did what he did, was courageous, got up, told people to continue fighting, and that... And that changed in a major way my perspective and my outlook on Trump. I am excited to vote for him. And again, I'm not going to caveat that. Let me tell you this too as well. Anybody who wants to tell you you shouldn't be excited, that you should just hold your nose and vote for Trump, and that you should be ashamed of having to vote for him or whatever the case may be, forget that. If you want to be excited about voting for Donald Trump, be excited to vote for Donald Trump. There's no reason why you should not hold on to that enthusiasm counter to whatever guilt manipulator out there would want you to think that you should feel bad about voting for that man, especially after the pair of cojones and the courage that he just demonstrated that he has. Don't feel bad about it at all. I plan on getting a Trump sign and putting it in my lawn. I might get stickers and put it on my vehicle and put it on my gear some vote for Trump 2024 MAGA stickers. I might even get a MAGA hat. I don't know. But what he showed me is more than any other politician that I've ever voted for has shown me. And you know, it's interesting. Our culture is a mess. Culture here in the United States of America has rightly been described as clown world, as trash world. It's as degenerate and freakish as... It has ever been in my lifetime, in most people's lifetimes, 
No, we're not at a completely unique point in history, but we are certainly at a freakish and degenerate point in American history, and of that there's no doubt. Sometimes, a culture like that is going to rise up a guy with a seedy history and a seedy character to come in and clean house. And if that man's Donald Trump, that is fine by me. I used to be that person that was going to hold their nose, take the plunge, and vote for Trump. No longer. I'm excited to vote for him. I'll be proud to vote for him. And I will not be guilt manipulated or shamed into thinking that I should not vote for him or that I should vote for him but feel bad. And you shouldn't feel bad about it either. Again, I reiterate, he showed you just about everything you need to know about him as a leader in the way that he responded to being nearly assassinated. So that's the first thing. Second thing, so like Brian Cole and Nate Wilson said on the Stories or Soul Food podcast, Trump is not the answer, but he is an answer. So don't turn him into a savior. Don't turn him into Jesus. Don't be that, I can't remember how long ago this was, but it was some time ago, as some guy was being interviewed about Trump, and he vo- he volunteered this information. The reporter didn't ask him this. He voluntarily told the reporter that if Trump were to murder someone, he would still vote for him and support him. Don't be that guy. Don't support and vote for somebody who would murder someone else. If Trump were to murder someone, he should be charged with a capital crime. So don't be insane. Don't be that guy. But he is an answer. Like I, like I alluded to, he's the kind of man you can expect to rise up in the midst of a filthy and degenerate culture, especially when so many of the leaders you would expect or hope for these pure men of just pure godly character to rise up there, especially when they're nowhere to be found, certainly within the political landscape, then you can expect a guy like Donald Trump to rise up. Again, not the answer. He's not the savior. That's Christ. But he is an answer. He is an antidote to the poison, to the filth, and to the rot of our culture. And I truly thank God that he is an answer to the filth and degeneracy that we have in this culture, at least in part, from the Democratic Party and from weak, soft conservatives, and that includes a lot of evangelical leaders like Russell Moore, almost everybody at the Gospel Coalition, Ligon Duncan, soft men like that, who are no help and have never done anything as remotely impactful as Donald Trump has done and have not shown remotely the kind of courage that Donald Trump has shown. Third, admittedly this is a little off topic, I'm glad he did not make a DEI pick for vice president. So he chose J.D. Vance of Hillbilly Elegy fame to be his VP. J.D. Vance is a senator from, I can't remember, where is he? Is he Ohio? I can't remember off the top of my head, and I know that Google's like a click away. Oh, whatever. Anyway, he chose J.D. Vance. And I'm really glad he didn't make a DEI pick. I, I thought for sure, it's just a hunch that I had. So the ethos of diversity, equity, and inclusion is in the air in the United States of America. It's pervaded even conservative elements within our country. And I thought, man, would would Donald Trump do that? I could totally see Donald Trump placating, choosing a woman, choosing a black man, some sort of DEI pick for vice president as some sort of a, I wouldn't even say tip of a cap to that, but just, again, it's it's in the air we breathe. You know, DEI is becoming more and more the ethos in our country. And it just would not have surprised me. I thought for sure he would make a DEI pick as some sort of attempt to appeal to a a wider base of voters. And he didn't. I am so glad that he ended up picking a straight white male. Is J.D. Vance a Christian? I think he may be. A straight white Christian male as his running mate because it means that he is not going to bow down to the DEI elements, that he is going to do, he knows who his base is, he knows who he's appealing to, he knows the kind of guys that he wants to put in his administration if he's willing to put a J.D. Vance in there, so he's not willing to bend the knee, at least for now it seems like, to the DEI mob, and that makes me really happy. All right, that's all I got to say about Trump. I'm sure there's a lot more I could say. I'm sure there's a lot more that perhaps needs to be said about 
uh, Donnie, but again, I'm thrilled that he is the Republican nominee. Can't wait to vote for him. I hope and pray, truly pray, that he wins in an utter and complete landslide. If the the Dems are lucky that they've got a few more months to conjure up some nonsense to throw at Trump, because if the election were today, if the election were within a week, Trump would win, I don't know, 35 or 40 states at least. He would destroy Joe Biden. And the way things are going, he's still going to. We can only hope that that's the uh, result that we have in the election. All right. Thanks for swinging by. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.